This is WOMMLP operating out of Burlington, Vermont, 105.9 The Radiator. Hello, it's a rocket shop. I'm your host, Tom Proctor, and with me tonight is Sarah Grace. Hello. Hi. I caught you halfway through drinking some water there. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I should have timed that better. <laughs> Hi. Uh, well, good evening. Thank you for joining us on Big Heavy World tonight. Thank you. Um, we usually like to kick it off with a song. So would you like to introduce your first one and take it away? Yeah, sure. This is um, also, this is my friend Ben Dunham. And Hello, uh, Ben Dunham. This is a song of mine. It's called Birdie. Birdie's on the phone trying to dance but with my voice she's all alone with her own chance to make a choice but you got it babe and you'll fly away
Sarah Grace there with Birdie. That was a beautiful song. Thank you. Um, so is this one of your new ones? I did see that you just had a new single release, so I'm wondering if this might be a package of new songs. Um, well, actually, we're going to record. This This song is actually about five years old, but I have never recorded it. So um, we're gonna. that's what we're going to do next. Um, and then the song that we just released is actually Ben's song. It's called Smoke Screen. Mm. Um, that we worked on together. So, so Birdie's next. So that song's next. So, uh, Ben, nice to meet you as well. Um, Thanks for having us. No, absolutely. Um, how long have you two been working together? Ben and I have been working together off and on for about five years. And we collaborate on writing, uh, live performances, and uh, studio work. That's, that's awesome. And uh, I know, Sarah, that you, you've worked with a lot of people in the past. Um, and probably currently still. Uh, so uh, is it something you look for when you want to collaborate with artists? Is there, a, is there like a, I don't know, is there a certain quality in an artist that you seek out when you want to make work with them? Yeah, it's just got to be, uh, the feeling's got to be there. It's got to be, um, uh, I mean, excuse my French, but it's got to be balls to the wall, you know? It just has to be, it just has to be, um, you know, feeling there. Do you, um, do you scout for that, or is it kind of just, a, you know, how do you find these I've artists? I've been really fortunate in this state to not have to scout for that. I feel like um, this state, I've lived in a lot of different states, um, but this state in particular, sorry, um, has so many amazing musicians and we're like a family and we all know each other and we all work together in different you know collaborations and so in that way i feel really spoiled um to have uh some of the better musicians just there you know just a phone call away so i have heard this said and i, I only ever worked in music in vermont so you'd have to Correct me if I'm wrong, but Vermont is quite unique in the sense that it's it's less about competition when it comes to music, it, and it's more about collaboration. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah, there's no competition here. Yeah, we all want to we all want to lift each other up. At least that's my understanding. You know. Um, what do you think? Why do you think Vermont has that kind of reputation or has that kind of environment? Maybe it has something to do with the landscape. I don't know, you know, I mean, this is, um, I mean, you know, when you're taking a trip to New York City, when you, you're coming back on, you know, 91, like, as soon as you hit the state line, you feel the difference. Um, and maybe it's the fact that there's, this might sound abstract, but maybe it's the fact that there's no billboards. I mean, we are, su we are surrounded by such beauty. Um, I would think that that sort of carries through in people's art. I mean, I know for myself, um, I always get really inspired, like in on certain seasons in Vermont. It's just the, the landscape is beautiful. There's also not much to do, um, so I think you know it could go either way. Like either people could get into trouble, or they could just like hone their craft. You know. And lucky for you, you've been honing your craft rather than getting into trouble. <laughs> well, you could do both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about you, Ben? Do you, do you have any theories on why why Vermont is kind of unique in its uh, musical environment? I do. It's a melting pot. And my experience has been that people are here to support each other. And there's a greater goal. And the greater goal is to convey what's real. And uh, there's nothing but support and connection to what we're trying to do. Yeah. Um. So, as you said, you, you two have been working um, on music the past five years. So, um, but this is the first time you're getting into the, into the studio, is that right? No, we actually, we released uh, a track, one of the Nancy's track, Why We Built the Wall, on the collaboration album in 17, and done a bunch of live shows, but now we're really trying to focus on landing singles, and uh, just keep, keep at it, keep working. What was, the, what was the impetus for that kind of the change in tact? What, why do you really like singles now? Well, I think ultimately we want to release singles and up to an album. 
and the idea is to keep it, everything fresh, keep it going every couple months. Um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of time and energy to put in, but it's super important that we stay focused and keep putting out fresh music. And do, do you two both write together at the same time, or is wh how does this how does this collaboration work? Yeah, we have. I lean on Sarah a lot. Yeah, yeah, I certainly do. As a, as a songwriter and producer, yeah, she's amazing, and uh, it's part of that that support system that we all need. Is it is it kind of like at the kitchen table on a Sunday afternoon kind of thing, or is a sure? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We've done that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and do you, are you recording at home at the moment? You you got a studio that you you're, you're working in? We've been working at the Tank in the North uh, Old North End, working with Rob O'Day and Ben Colette. So those guys have been incredibly supportive, and the studio is just banging over there. You know, they're uh, they're on top of it. Has it been? I mean, I've got I've asked this to every artist to come in here, but COVID, how's that put? Is that put a wrench in the works in terms of? being able to produce the music that you want to? Yeah, it's been challenging. But fortunately, we're doing a lot of remote recording and, uh, you know, just being safe, you know, staying in our bubble. And, and uh, in a lot of ways, priorities have changed. And I've said that before, but I think we really need to take care of each other, look out for family and friends. But it's more important that we're actually just safe and we're doing this in the best possible way we can. Yeah. As uh, the the manner of your writing changed at all? Is there, or, or is the subject matter that you're writing about changed? Not at all. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't written a song about COVID yet. I mean, no. it's not, very, it's not a very, uh, you know, inspiring subject. <laughs> of, uh, you know, it's like totally affecting us all in different ways. You know, everyone's got their different version of, um, of, of trouble, you know, of hardship right so, i kind of thought the way it w uh, as you were mentioning like vermont especially the winters make you kind of hunker down and in a weird way that's kind of how covid has has worked as well and so you know being cloistered in your own house uh even if the songs aren't directly about covid uh uh, I was kind of wondering whether or not that's given you more time to be able to kind of think over lyrics or or rearrange uh, certain tracks or kind of really think deeper into the music that you're creating. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was. Um, so this spring felt for me personally felt more like um, a winter, you know, felt like winter extended. And I personally, as an artist, also a visual artist, I tend to make the most art during the fall and the winter it's like i'm there's just something it's like really easy to just sit down and get into a groove where i don't know the sun when the sun's shining everyone everything's beautiful you know you sit down and you're like i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to be in here you know it's not so for me personally like my my spring this last spring was like super productive uh songwriting um you know painting you know just um overall sort of like you know rethinking priorities it's really easy to get um stuck into patterns and like you know patterns that might bring a lot of money to the table but aren't necessarily good for your um create you know creativity and you know mental health mm -hmm. in general so yeah. so yeah I think I think we've all felt that a little bit mm -hmm. regardless of yeah. whether or not we're creating tracks right um, well I would love to hear another song um, would you like to introduce it maybe tell us a little bit what inspired it and uh, then take it away um, yeah well um, so this uh, th can I play a cover tune you can, play what, you can play what you so wish so this song's called I'm Alive and it's by um, Rusty Bell. And they used to, I think they're from New Hampshire. They used to play at Landon Street Cafe in Montpelier all the time. And I absolutely love them. And I think it, 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 the title is, you know, f sings for itself. So. <laughs> Thank you. 
closest ocean that I can reach And to throw my eyes under the thin blade of the horizon line the blade of the horizon line the line of service steady once again and leaves me on the earth I'm Alive there by uh, Sarah Grace. And sorry, what's the band that was the original artist? Rusty Bell. Rusty Bell. Uh, I'm trying to think whether or not we've had them in the studio. We've had a few on Pillar bass bands come in, but I'm not sure if that's one of, one of them. Yeah, they're amazing. Like the super simple, really together, um, percussive, just really super tasty song. Um, I am always, always love having folks from Montpelier in here. They seem to have a kind of slightly different vibe to Burlington bass bands. How so? Uh, well, they all know each other, I would say, slightly better than Burlington bands. Burlington bands come and go a little bit quicker, I feel. I mean, there obviously, there's a big core group of Burlington bands that have been here forever and always will be. But uh, I definitely feel the Montpelier bands are all... C- there's, a, there's a real kind of community hub of uh, when it comes to musicians in Montpelier. Yeah. But then again, I'm saying this as a Burlingtonian who's only seen this from afar. So maybe maybe it's exactly the same. I'm not, sh- I'm not sure. That makes sense. Yeah, that's cool. Um, Montpelier represent. Right? <laughs> and yeah. ha- how long have you been in the capital for? Uh, 15 years. Okay. Yeah. 
So yeah. quite a while. Yeah, quite a long time. It's been such a fun journey. It's changed quite a bit, but um, it's still lovely. I love it there. Um, whereabouts were you? Did, what was your kind of background? Because you said you've been pl- you've played in different places and you. Yep, um, lived in different places. Um, yeah. I was born in Pennsylvania, in Central Pennsylvania, and um, I traveled around a bunch. I lived in Pittsburgh for a little bit, and then I went to New York City when I was young, and then I came back home, and then I went to uh, Moab, Utah, lived there for a little bit, and then moved to New Orleans. And then went back to New York City, and then finally landed in uh, Vermont. And this is like, this is like where I want to be. I want to, I I hope to die in this state. You know, it's it's the best in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm very sure. I've lived in a few places myself, as you probably can tell by the accent. Um, but um, <laughs> I definitely feel that Vermont is a certain stickiness about it. It's very difficult to leave. Or even uh, I- if you do leave, so many people end up coming back. Uh, and I think there's a good reason for that. Um, it must have been a hell of a transition for you, going from New Orleans to, uh, to Utah to New Orleans. That's uh, <laughs> that's a whole that's a whole cultural change right there. Big time, yeah. And especially being from Pennsylvania, like I'd never, well, for one, I never experienced the desert before, and that was that was amazing. I remember uh, I landed in Salt Lake City. And I got on this bu- this van actually called the Bighorn. It was a shuttle from Salt Lake to Moab. And I fell asleep on it and I woke up. And the first time, like, red rocks, you know, for, for miles and miles, just desert. But then the kicker was it snowed. So it was, like, dusted with white snow. I felt like I was um, on a different planet. Really, literally. I felt like I was on Mars or something. And then southern, the south is way different from, from uh, you know, up, up, up mm-hmm. here. It's uh, everyone's so friendly. You know, everyone says hi. People come and talk to you. They, you know, it's like just a completely different. I miss it. it was, mm-hmm. That was such a cool. It's, you know, I carry that in my head. So. And New Orleans as a city musically is uh, is phenomenal. Um, obviously, more more of jazz vibes, but even so, it's I mean it's got so much to offer in terms of uh, musicality and and the people are obviously fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been down there briefly. I definitely want to go down again at some point. Um, so I I did see that you you seem to be a performer in very different aspects, a creator in different aspects. So you you're a it sounds like you're a visual artist, uh, obviously a musician, and you're also an actor. Um, I I guess um, I would say, uh, you know, I've done some performing. I did. I performed in um, Hades Town, uh, the very first grassroots production. Um, but I would also say, just um, there's a certain amount of acting that you have to embody, just going out in public. Um, going in the grocery store and putting on a baby <laughs> face, you know what I mean? So I've been told I'm a great actress, but I don't fancy myself one so much. But um, performing, um, I'm a performance artist for sure, definitely. And yeah. so how does, um, as, a, as a performance artist, are you, I mean, is it kind of, uh, are you putting on, events and exhibitions and stuff that include yourself as a as like the the live performer the live artist uh, only just musical performances mm. yeah. okay yeah yeah i wouldn't go out of my way to like create a play or you know something like this some kind of performance art you know that 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 didn't entail music i see yeah um so i was actually going to ask you uh what how does performing as an actor differ to as a musician uh in terms of the the feeling the rush um and what the similarities but it sounds like it's been a while since since you're on that stage yeah so i wouldn't i wouldn't know i wouldn't know how to answer that question um and in fact like i don't in the the only acting i've done involved music oh, okay so i wouldn't even know honestly um when I'm on, when I found myself on stage without an instrument in my hands, I'm like I don't don't know what to do with my <laughs> hands, you know. So there's like 
it's it's a thing. I admire um, actors and actresses. And, yeah. And um, I'm since we've all kind of as we've been talking about like closest inside. Uh, there's been no live performances really recently. So how how have you both been kind of dealing with that? And what do you have planned coming up in the future to try and get around that? Are you doing any kind of uh, social distance performances or anything like that? Well, we hosted a, a, a few small concerts in my backyard. We built a stage, mm. invite only. And it was really nice because we were able to have the neighbors come out and we had a little fire pit and they were able to sit on their property. Uh, we had, I don't know, 15 or so private invites. And in the future, I'm not really sure what that looks like right now. I have my concerns about hosting any event. Yeah, th I've seen a couple of festivals being advertised, you know, in the sticks, and they say it's going to be socially distanced and, and whatnot. And uh, I've been a little bit skeptical. I've had a couple of friends go to them and have mixed messages from, from them. Uh, but it does feel like we need to figure out some kind of way because so many of us are missing live performances, you know. There's a yeah, I agree. It's definitely, it's, it's very noticeable when it's not in your life. So, um, but nothing planned for, for you two at the moment in terms of uh, getting that music out in a live kind of basis? I think we're going to continue the small scale, you know, invite private events. Mm -hmm. Well... Before uh, the snow flies, though. Right. <laughs> you know, then, then there's that, you know. I think there's things like, um, you know, Zen Barn's been doing some stuff that I was thinking, like, oh, now's the, you know, now's the time, for, while it's still, you know, decent out outside. But when the snow flies, it's, uh, it's going to be, it might be even more, you know, a lot more solitude. Who knows? Right. Yeah. I mean, unless we all just get dressed up in parkas and <laughs> just go out regardless, you know? You know. Um, well, we've got about time for one more song. So, uh, yeah, what have you got for us? Uh, I've got Dear Prudence by the Beatles. Ooh. All right. kind of a good COVID song, I think. Won't you come out here?
like a little, like a little child. Birds will sing, days will change. Let me see you smile again. Sarah Grace Sow with a great cover of Dear Prudence. <laughs> Thank nice. you both so much for coming into the studio. I really appreciate it. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Thank you. It's so nice to be here. This is such an awesome space you have here. I think I want to take pictures and cool vibe. Yeah. Please do. I'm pretty <laughs> sure Jim Jim back there will be glad for you to do it. Um, but yeah, uh, keep us all posted on on any new stuff and keep posting those singles. Uh, really enjoyed listening to a couple of them this afternoon. Um, we will have Julius Spellman in the studio next week. That will be on the Rocket Shop. At same time, same place, Wednesday, 105.9, the radiator at 8 o'clock. But this has been the Rocket Shop. I've been your host, Tom Proctor, and good night. <laughs> <laughs>